Welcome everyone to a packed day of MySQL content. Uh, I'll be kicking off the day with uh, the latest and greatest uh, from MySQL and MySQL 8 uh, together with Mark here. Uh, so let's go to the first slide. It, this year, MySQL celebrates its 25th year anniversary. I've been with a with the group uh, for 17 years now, and a lot of stuff has been happening uh, over the years. Uh, you're familiar with LAMP. Uh, MySQL is the M in LAMP, and uh, MySQL grew big uh, together with the internet boom, and many companies have grown up and grown big together with MySQL uh, over the past 20 years. Uh, for example, Facebook, Google, and Twitter, and so on. So uh, please join us in celebrating the 25th anniversary. And we're in good company here also with uh, PHP and Java, who's also celebrating 25 years uh, this year. Next slide. Uh, as I said, um, MySQL started off uh, in the internet world. Uh, if you were uh, building a, a website or something in the early 2000, uh, you would be doing that with MySQL and the LAMP stack. But since then, uh, a lot have happened. Uh, today, open source databases are mainstream. And for some Gartner data here, 70% uh, of new in-house applications will be developed on an open source database management system uh, uh, by 2022. 89% of organizations reported using free and open source uh, database software, uh, a third using more uh, in more than 50% of the organization. So. Uh, over these past 20 years, uh, open source has really become mainstream, and it's not only about the web today, it is everywhere. Next slide, please. Uh, MySQL is the number one open source database. It was the database uh, of the year, 2019. Uh, there are many different ways where uh, databases are being ranked. Here's one of them, where you see MySQL in the top uh, together with uh, Oracle. Uh, of course, MySQL being the most popular uh, open source database um, up there. Next slide, please. And as I also mentioned, uh, MySQL is today everywhere. Uh, uh, I mentioned Facebook, uh, Twitter already uh, in the social media space, but you can go into e-commerce with uh, Netflix, Uber, Alibaba, uh, go into uh, software as a service, GitHub, Zendesk, Desk, Finance with JP Morgan, Vista, and in the fintech space as well with PayPal and WePay, etc. So you find MySQL powering uh, systems all across the different uh, verticals. Next slide. MySQL is the most popular database for developers. Here are two surveys, one from Stack Overflow and one from JetBrains. Uh, it's between 55 and 60% if you ask them about the most popular database or which database you've been using uh, for the last 12 months. Uh, MySQL is the most popular by far. Uh, the second is maybe half or a little bit more than half uh, of, of and when you look at the popularity. Look at the next slide. So 8.0 highlights. Um, there are many things in 8.0. Uh, I want to just highlight a few of the uh, bigger changes or bigger additions that we have to 8.0. We're talking about the MySQL document store, MySQL InnoDB cluster, MySQL security, and MySQL shell. Next slide. So uh, started off on the, on the first slide with uh, a giant leap for SQL. Uh, we've now gone past SQL 92 uh, in the uh, latest release 8.0. We now have support for window functions and common table expressions. Uh, start clicking into boxes of things that we uh, cover in MySQL. You see that we are very fully featured with a lot of different kind of uh, support that we will touch on uh, in the coming slides as well. But uh, just remember that uh, MySQL has a really, really strong uh, SQL support today. Next slide. Document store. With uh, MySQL 8, we have joined SQL world and the NoSQL world together. You can choose to work uh, 
completely in schemaless JSON collections. You can choose to, uh, to work completely in the relational world, or you can do, uh, combine and work in both worlds, uh, mix and match as it suits you. Uh, we also provided a new API to support you in this. You can either use SQL or the, the CRUD uh, create, uh, read, update, delete uh, interface. Next slide. So SQL and uh, NoSQL in MySQL 8. Um, you can use uh, document-oriented data storage from MySQL. We have full JSON document support to SQL and the new XDev Dev, Dev API. Uh, we can work schema-less or schema-based data in the same tech stack. You can use collections of uh, documents, relational tables together. Uh, you can do rapid prototyping with simple CRUD APIs. Uh, you have a modern API using method chaining and asynchronous execution. And of course, you have what you're used to with MySQL. You have a wide range of language support, everything from Node.js, Java, all the way to PHP and Python, where um, MySQL grew up uh, back in the days. So next slide. Uh, with MySQL, uh, you can get started in minutes. Uh, we provided a new uh, shell functionality, which is the uh, a tool which now uh, you can use for everything uh, MySQL. You can go in there and you can do rapid prototyping. It has uh, full JavaScript support, Python support. Uh, it has full SQL and XDev API support with built-in uh, auto-completion, so very convenient. Uh, I will be touching on the InnoDB cluster support shortly. It's really a, a, a DevOps tool where you can use, uh, uh, use it for anywhere to accessing your data, uh, creating your schemas, uh, managing uh, the operations of uh, your database. I just want to emphasize in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, with the new SQL, you can, you can get going with the MySQL database without typing a single uh, SQL command. Uh, you can start using uh, the uh, documents right away. Uh, there's an example here uh, in, the, in the slide around creating a schema doc store, and then you start using the doc store, and then you can start using the CRUD interface with just uh, regular put get uh, commands. Next slide. Um, of course, we're a relational database, so we keep uh, uh, enhancing that. Uh, I already talked about the SQL support. Another big uh, new thing in 8.0 is the hash join support, which has uh, especially good uh, performance benefits when you look at uh, benchmarks like uh, DBD3, for example. Uh, uh, comparing to non-indexed uh, uh, a setup, you can get anything from uh, 1000x to 500x performance boost. Of course, it's not the same if, if you have index data, but uh, uh, the hash joins really uh, uh, brings MySQL 8 to the next level. Uh, it replaces the, uh, the, the batched uh, uh, nested loop uh, joins uh, in, in some of the queries. You can also choose to, to use uh, the hash joins in your queries uh, with the help of hints as well. Up to the next slide. Uh, we also provided you with more uh, help uh, when you are working with your queries and try to understand uh, how they are being optimized. If you want to sort of uh, help it out with indexes and so on, we have a new explain analyze uh, functionality which instruments and executes the queries, shows you the estimated cost, uh, actual execution statistics, and so on, uh, and uses this new tree output format to make it really easy to uh, uh, digest as well. Next slide. Uh, a huge step forward for 8.0 is the built-in uh, native uh, support for HA with InnoDB cluster. Uh, with 8.0, uh, HA is now a first-class citizen in MySQL. You get it out of the box when you download MySQL. HA built in. It's using a technology called group replication, which builds on the proven technology that we've had for many, many years, which you know is just regular replication. 
Uh, group replication provides you the high availability, uh, availability functionality, elasticity, uh, full tolerancy, uh, self-healing uh, capability. I will be uh, mentioning a little bit more about that in the next slide. Uh, you have a, a MySQL router functionality, uh, which uh, sits in front of the uh, uh, cluster in order to uh, make sure that your queries get routed to the right place. Uh, and then you have MySQL shell that I talked about to set up and manage and orchestrate this whole system. So the takeaway here is uh, HA is now part of MySQL. Uh, when you download it, it's a first class citizens is supported out of the box. Next slide. Uh, furthermore, with 8.0, we also have uh, the, the clone functionality. Uh, when you, you can then start from a single uh, MySQL server and then gradually build out uh, your cluster and uh, move from single instance to a highly available uh, MySQL in a DB cluster. Uh, the clone functionality uh, enables uh, the system to automatically provision the data in the joining uh, nodes. Uh, it, it will use a consistent snapshots, make sure that while you're actually uh, adding this new member that the data is available all the time. So there's no downtime, your service is up uh, the whole time while this new uh, member uh, joins. So you can, without any service interruptions, you can mo move from a, a single instance uh, setup to a highly available uh, setup. Uh, the clone is fully automatic and does uh, Snapchat provisioning. Next slide. Uh, furthermore, we also have our enterprise edition. Next slide. Uh, it, on top of the community edition, this adds a number of advanced features, management tools, and of course, our first class uh, support. Uh, high availability support, authentication, auditing, firewall. I'll mention that more in later slide. We have management tools, uh, we have backup, uh, hot backup. Uh, you can back up your database without service interruption. Um, uh, migration support, and then of course, uh, our first class support. Uh, you can get technical support, you can get uh, consultative support, and you can also get uh, Oracle certifications. Next slide. So uh, MySQL Enterprise Edition is about reducing risk, cost, and complexity. Uh, you've probably seen in, uh, in the press uh, a lot around uh, breaches and how costly that is for uh, um, organizations. These are uh, billion dollar fines. Uh, so you really wanna make sure that you have the best possible protection for your data and the features that we provide in the Enterprise Editions uh, helps you in doing that with for example, enterprise masking, uh, transparent data encryption, authentication, uh, encryption, firewall, audit, and then we have enterprise monitor as well, uh, and uh, enterprise backup, all packaged in the enterprise edition. Next slide. And that brings us to the second section here. So I want to introduce Mark, uh, who will... Um, uh, talk about another new thing that we have launched this year, uh, the MySQL database service. Go ahead, Mark. Thanks for that, Thomas. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, thanks for joining us again today. Um, my name is Mark Lee. I'm a software development manager with the MySQL database service team in Oracle. What is Oracle MySQL database service? It's a fully managed MySQL database as a service offering. Um, it's something that we've been working on for quite a while now, uh, along with all of the great stuff that Thomas has just been talking about that the, the team's been doing. We've also been working hard on, on creating a, a, a database as a service offering that we can give to you um, from, from our own engineering team. Um, so it's a, a fully managed MySQL database as a service. That means it's uh, it provides automatic provisioning uh, you, you interact with it through an, uh, an API. Uh, we do all of the things like patching and upgrades for you. Uh, we do automatic backups in, in the back end. 
there are other things in in the service as well. So we we have a set of um, optimized configurations that we've tested and and, and proven and and give to you by default so that you can use those and a configuration system that you can build your own configurations from. Uh, and it's fully based on MySQL 8.0 Enterprise Edition. Uh, that means it's fully compatible with any of your on-premises installations. There are no uh, changes to it that are you know, um, unique to the environment that it runs in, like some, some of the other cloud providers. What you see is what you get. So if you, if you run Enterprise Edition on-prem, on we're essentially running it in the cloud and you'll, you'll have a same experience across both. It's natively integrated into Oracle Cloud Infrastructure or OCI. Um, OCI is Oracle's next generation cloud infrastructure and it's essentially built with security focus at its core. So uh, we've done the same with, with our service as well and focused on making sure that our, our, our MySQL database service is as secure as possible out of the box and follow all of the, uh, the, the standard security practices that Oracle OCI does. Uh, it's, that also means it's fully um, wrapped in the, the, the same interfaces that the rest of the services are in OCI as well. So we have a, at the core, we have a REST API uh, driven control plane. Um, and around the surfaces of that, we wrap uh, a console, CLI, SDKs, DevOps tools. I'll give some examples of those in a bit. And it's available in multiple regions, pretty much in every continent on the earth at the moment and quickly expanding. Um, and the, the key to it really is it's 100% it's developed, managed and supported by the MySQL team. It's something that we um, have spent a, a, a lot of time on. We're making sure that we're engineering the server to um, run appropriately in the environment and we're, the whole team is focusing on making sure that MySQL database service is a success. So this is just a, a quick example and I'll show some, a, a few more details of um, the, the actual service itself, but at the, at the um, on, on the bottom right hand side, you see basically the connection to the database. This is the service that we provide to you and, and, and is the core of the service, of course. You know, that's, that's what, where you uh, interact with your database. We run a, what's called a cloud. Uh, you see there, 8021 cloud version. Um, that is just an enterprise build. We just have a, a, an individual cloud moniker that we put on the version. It doesn't bring anything um, any different to an enterprise server. Around the, the edges of the, that client, you see the various different things uh, or, or types of things that you can use to interact to actually manage the database itself. So what, what that means is looking at some of the metrics, looking at the status of the, the, the instance, doing things like starting and stopping and restarting it, or uh, deleting it if, when, you've, when you've come to no longer need it, looking at the backups, all of those kinds of things. Every, uh, every interaction is available across all of the uh, different interfaces. So you can use the console, you can use a Java SDK or a Python Go. Uh, if you're into DevOps and uh, configuration as code, then you can use things like Terraform to um, manage and deploy your instances and Ansible for ops tooling as well. Um, finally, we were integrated into the OCI CLI. Um, we're a fully native integrated service. So that means um, we, we pretty much look and feel like every other service of compute and networking and all of those kinds of things. A quick look at the basic architecture of, of the service. Um, so on the left-hand side, you'd have your data center or whatever interface that you, you however you wanna manage your, your, your cloud infrastructure. Um, if you have a, a data center that you want to link to uh, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, there are a, a number of ways that you can do that in a secure fashion. One of them is a VPN. This is the example. Others are like Fast Connect and, and various other different ways that you can, you can connect um, your infrastructure with ours, essentially. Um, 
moving a little bit further over to the right, the, there's a user tenancy there. Um, it's in some region in Oracle Cloud infrastructure. Um, in Oracle, in, in OCI, um, certain regions have three domains, availability domains. So you, you, you can put your infrastructure across multiple um, availability domains for uh, HA or, you know, um, load balancing, those, those kinds of things. This example, we have uh, a VCN that's sat in a user tenancy. It has a couple of subnets. One's a public one, one's a private one. The private one is the one that the databases sit in, typically. Um, and they might have some routing across them, right? So you, you connect to a virtual machine. That might be an application server. It might be a client server. Uh, it doesn't matter for this example. They then connect to the, what's seen in the tenancy as a MySQL DB system. Um, so that's exposed to you as a, a, a network endpoint that on that subnet that you specify. Um, and that is what you then use to connect to the database system and issue your SQL, get your results, do whatever you need to from the, from the application's perspective. That it in turn is talking to um, the actual database, you know, the actual infrastructure uh, as managed within our service, uh, essentially. So that uh, typically maps to a virtual machine and one or many block volumes that are attached to the, the, the virtual machine, depending on how much storage you, you allocate. Uh, the more storage you allocate, as with OCI block volumes, they are high performance and they are scalable storage. So uh, as you add more volume capacity, your IO capacity also increases along with that too. Um, that's all managed and set up by us. So essentially you would interact with the API service to, to launch that, you see that at the top right. Um, that API service then interacts with our control plane and tells it to configure and create a, a, a DB system for you and, and attach it to your, your network um, and do all of the other configuration that you might have set as well, right? So uh, like I said, we have an optimized set of configurations. You can choose your own configs. When you choose to launch a, a service, we'll configure it however you've told us to and then attach it to your, your network for you. Um, the control plane, and, and as I said, it's a fully managed service. So there's a, a, a number of things that the control plane does. It sits there and monitors the health of instances, even if they are non-HA. Uh, and it does all of the other things like the automatic management of the instances, backing them up, making sure that the systems are patched and your databases are upgraded appropriately. And any of the other lifecycle uh, events that you might push through the service as well, like starting and stopping the, the instance or anything like that. It also does the job of uh, interacting with the rest of the um, standard OCI services. So if you have used OCI built natively into the OCI services, there are a number of other things that um, make the experience richer from a cloud perspective. So uh, a number of standard monitoring metrics that you can um, monitor and create alarms from. Um, standard events, cloud events. So notifying that some action has happened um, or something has happened underneath the covers of the API. Uh, tags, so that you can tag your resources or do things like cost tagging, tracking tags to uh, keep track of costs based on tags and things like that. And also uh, auditing, you know, everybody, uh, especially with API actions, people creating and stopping and starting and deleting databases wants to make sure that that is properly audited as well. So we do all of that um, and then we expose it in the standard interfaces uh, as with the other um, services with, with OCI so that you see a consistent view of all of those things across all of your resources. And then finally, we do all of the backup and restore. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll get into that in a little bit, but the, the backup and restore is essentially interacting with, with, with those block volumes as well underneath the purpose of the service. So what is a DB system? Um, a MySQL database service DB system 
at its core is, is essentially the, the abstraction or the logical abstraction of any of the database resources that we um, provision and look after for you. Um, it's a regional abstraction of, of all of that as well. So I said earlier that um, some regions in OCI have multiple availability domains. So the, the, the notion of the DB systems sits across all of those availability domains as well. Um, it's based on Enterprise 8.0. It uses, for instance, things like the Enterprise Thread Pool plugin for scalability, even on smaller cores, so that you can have a higher number of connections with a smaller core count and still get reasonable throughput. Um, and when you choose your, your primary um, database node, you get the uh, ability to place it in an availability domain of your choosing. At the moment, we only have single, um, single systems, HA is being worked on, but you can imagine in the future, HA will have, uh, for instance, a, a, an instance in every AD, but will still be a single DB system with multiple nodes uh, across it. Um, as I said, there's a, a set of endpoints. You, 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 you choose the VCN subnet that you want to launch your DB system into. Uh, we currently support this read-write um, mode. That's the, what we're introducing to you today. But you can imagine that those things will be extended into read-only replicas and those kinds of things, standard database setup, essentially. Um, so that's, that's the DB system. It, it, it sits across the region, and it will, it, it's the logical abstraction of the physical and um, the, the, the topology that, that essentially will be created in the future, uh, but starting with a, a single node and a single AD and, and building up from there. It's controlled by the standard OCI limits interfaces and things like that as well. And we expose a number of key metrics um, into OCI's public monitoring service. So uh, you can do things like um, monitor for resource usage, um, build a, alarms on those, get a, get a notification to, the, to those. You can do things like actions based on those things or all sorts of things with OCI's monitoring service. It's, it's a great service. So the, the MySQL database service configurations, um, like I said, they, they're a set of default configurations that are optimized for each of the supported shapes that we allow at the moment. With the, with the current version, we, we uh, support the E2 shape in OCI um, and support all of the VM E2 shapes for, for OCI. So we've created a, a set of configurations across all of those different shapes that set the, all of the appropriate variables based on the resources that are uh, available to the system. So that might be things like um, not just memory. So that, that's the easy one, right? So you, you have uh, eight or 16 or 32 gig of memory on a machine. So you'd set, for, for instance, certain sizes for the InnoDB buffer, but also things like um, thread variables, how many threads do X and Y. So, you know, things like InnoDB read IO threads and, and, and those kinds of things. Those kinds of things are all set depending on how many CPUs um, and, and resources that you can use concurrently as well. So we, we've set a, a number of all of these different variables and tried to tune them to the shape itself for the, a, a, a generic workload, essentially. So we, we tried to target the most generic type of uh, benchmark workloads. Um, and then we allow you to tweak those variables further um, if they don't fit your needs entirely. Uh, so the, the custom configurations, they build upon the default configurations. You don't have to build your own um, conf config entirely from scratch. You can just tweak certain variables that aren't um, okay for the default configurations. And then the rest of the variables that we set by default are automatically consumed into any of your custom, custom configs. It just makes sure that you can just tweak the little bits that you need to, but the rest is properly configured for the, for the environment and the service. 
Each config, like I said, is directly linked to each, each shape. And configurations are also regional resources. So you can use them or, or create them in each region that your, um, your applications or your systems run in. And you can then launch a DB system from any AD within the region using the same configuration. Configurations are shared across all of the, the DB systems as well. Often you'll see fleets of um, DB systems or MySQL instances being used, for example, and they all need to be configured in the, in the same way. Um, you know, and, and it becomes a configuration nightmare actually when, you, when you're trying to do that yourself. So the configuration system basically gives you this shared config system that allows you to easily con configure a, a bunch of um, instances um, with a, a single shared one. And then with backups, we support automatic backups and manual backups. We have a fast online backup architecture. The co uh, control plane does essentially a coordinated non-blocking snapshot of the DB system block volumes. Um, they can be kept for a, a, a specific defined period. By default, it's seven days. It can be up to 35 days. With a manual backup, so if you want to take a snapshot and keep it for a longer period of time, you can take a manual backup. They can be kept for up to a year. Uh, there's a, a limit on those that can be tweaked with limit increases, but the default is 100 by default per region. And with the way that we take the backups, it's a fast restore process. Um, we just essentially launch a new instance, do a fast recovery of the, back, uh, of the block volumes and get the instance on as fast as possible. When we restore, we also allow cross version restore. If you have a, a backup that you can keep for up to 365 days, that may be on an older version, but when you bring it back online, you want it to be on the most secure version. So we have a way to also um, bring back old versions, bring them up to date, and give, you, give it to you in the most up-to-date and secure fashion. So that's a, a description of it. Let's go take a quick look at what it looks like from the console. Going to sign it. So this is a Oracle OCI tenancy. When you, when you hit it, you, you hit this default landing page. And now you will start to see this MySQL option in the menu here. So if I first go to the DB systems, in Ashburn, I have a couple of DB systems. I'm, I have a compartment. So the way that OCI um, works is it's based on a compartment infra infrastructure. Um, each compartment, if you logically can contain a set of resources, you can put everything in there from a, the whole network and compute and databases and um, streaming infrastructure and everything else that the OCI supports. Or you can break them up into logical sections of things. You can put networking in one compartment. You could put a, um, a, a division of your company in one compartment, You know, all of those kinds of things. Um, in, in this one, I have just a, a compartment for this keynote. It has a VCN in it that I've created that um, is just following the VCN wizard in, in OCI. It's a very simple one. It provisions a public subnet and a private subnet. Um, and then I've created um, a, a rule on that to route the 3306 traffic across the from the public subnet to the private one. Um, and I've launched a compute in there as well. And I have these two DB systems, just to describe what I have in it. So uh, this is the first one that I created uh, uh, some time ago. It's inactive at the moment. That means it's stopped. And then I have another one here that is active at the moment. Um, one thing to, to note with active and inactive, you can start and stop your database systems when you stop them, we stop the billing for the compute. We don't stop billing for, for storage, but if you're not using the compute, then we will stop the billing for, for compute. So you can, if you have uh, an application server that you 
don't use on the weekends or only use in the daytime and never at night and on the weekends, then you can, uh, you can code actions. Nobody wants to do it manually, but you can use something like the Ansible tooling or any of the other SDKs to bring your DB system online and offline at whatever time is appropriate to you and, and uh, billing does the right thing for you. So this one, just to show very quickly, it's very easy to start a DB system. Off it will go and it will, it will start it. This one, just to show the, the active one and, and, and see what a DB system really is. You can see at the moment, I'm running the latest version, 8021 in the cloud. It's running on an E24. So uh, that's essentially an, in, in OCI, OCPUs are a, um, uh, equivalent to double of most of the other uh, cloud providers. So where you'd see a, an E24 here, that would be something like an 8, eight um, vCPU or something like that. Um, you can see the configuration that is being used and how much storage and, and the, you know, the, the current um, configuration for when it's being backed up and also your, your maintenance window. Um, that is the window that essentially any um, maintenance, you know, patching and upgrading and all of those kinds of things happen. You can set it very specifically when you, when you launch your instance, or we set um, a, an automatic one if you, you don't pick that. Um, you see where the instance is actually um, located, which AD, which fault domain. In OCI, an availability of domain is also broken up into fault domains as well. A fault domain is, again, another abstraction of um, infrastructure that should work, continue to run and, and work independently of any of the other fault domains within the availability domain. So you can very specifically place like with your compute in OCI, where your DB systems sit as well. Um, you see where, what um, IP address and ports that we're actually exposing ourselves on and the host name um, and the sources, if it um, is from something like a backup and, and, and recreate it. Uh, we record a, a number of metrics, so, Okay, so we record the, the, the basic KPIs, uh, if you will, of every um, database system. So every DBA is interested in things like, um, what is the concurrency on, on my instance? So essentially, how many people do I have connected? How many do I actually have running at any one period of time? Um, so you, you can see the, the overall concurrency of, of, of who's executing what. You can see how many statements over time are being executed and what their latency is. So the, the, the big three, you know, the concurrency throughput and um, response time uh, essentially are all well represented straight away. The others that we, we expose are also all of the resource utilization. So I'm using an E24. You can see how much of the CPU is being used and how much of the memory on that, that host is being used. It's minimal. This is a, a, an idle instance at the moment. And you can also see uh, how much your disk IO uh, is being used as well, both in IOPS and, and how many bytes uh, are being transferred. Um, because we're using um, the block volumes for, for our, our storage, that all goes across the, the network as well. Um, so it's uh, key for you to understand exactly all of your resource utilization for your instances to under understand if they're um, doing well for you, if you're over committing, for instance, or under committing and, and need to um, increase the, the size of your, your database systems. The endpoints are um, at the moment a single endpoint, but you see the full host name of, of where you could connect to the status of that endpoint, and then the actual IP address and ports, uh, very much like this, but you can see this is a read-write one. This will become a set over time, but at the moment, the, the, the initial um, offering has this, this single endpoint too. You can also see the backups as they uh, happen over time. You can see that this one is actually um, 
uh, was taken as an initial snapshot. I did this myself. It's a manual backup. It's being kept for a year. And then this is an automatic backup. So this is one that happened overnight on, on some night. And uh, you can see exactly the version that it came from, how, uh, how long it will be kept for. Um, and it's very easy to, to restore one of those into a, into a new DB system. I'll show an example of that in a minute. Um, you can see that I'm using a, this, this configuration. So I'm going to quickly go and, and, and show the configuration system as well. This is uh, uh, the configuration that the instance is using. Um, it has a number of things in it. You can see the, the various different options that we override. Some of these you can change. Some of them you can't. So for instance, things like GT, G, GTID mode being on is something that we set and we enforce consistency and we disable a set of storage engines and we set a specific data to um, all of those things you can't change as a user. We've changed, we've set them to be what we think is the most optimal config for a DB system and MySQL itself. Um, certain ones you can change. So if you want to see what is user defined versus system defined, you can quickly drill in and see that this one is overriding a, a, a normal config and it's overridden three different variables. So you've got this auto commit, connect timeout and SQL require primary key. Um, that essentially means that the DB system for every created table in this case will require you to, to create a, a primary key. Creating those are fairly easy, right? So you can um, quickly create something, tie it to a shape, as I said. We give you a set of variables that you can choose. There are quite a number of them, for example. You can do things like tweak your own. You can set this to 200 maybe, and off it goes. You've got a new con configuration. You can use that to, to launch from a DB system. Likewise, launching a DB system is very easy as well. You see this one's become active. I want to show that it's easy to manage these across all of your different regions as well. So that was Ashburn. I'm going to go across the world. I'm now in Tokyo, uh, and I'm running another Keynote database over here. Um, launching a database system is fairly easy. If I wanted to create another one like the uh, DB2 one, so my Keynote db db yeah, 2 You choose the AD in, in Tokyo, it has a single AD, choose a fault domain, choose whatever shape and config that you want. You can just launch the default ones or change the shape into whatever is, uh, or, or whatever you have limits available for. Um, this is the standard set of shapes. I'm gonna go with the default, choose 50 uh, gig of storage. You have to set a, a username and you have to set a strong password. This is required not just by the API, but by the database server as well. You choose where you want to launch your cloud uh, or, or your instance into. My And then you choose how often you want backups to happen. You can select windows and, and periods and those kinds of things. I'll choose the default. And that's pretty much it. Off it goes, it will create a DB system for me. Um, and once it's ready, it will hand over the endpoint uh, and I'll be able to connect to it from there. It took no time to launch that. It, in a few minutes, it will be handed over to me and. Uh, and you can start interacting with it. To show what a DB system um, looks like quickly from inside, I want to connect to this, this one. So let's go over here. I, like I said, I have a compute 
running in this compartment as well. It's on this IP address. So let's see if it actually responds to me. Bonus. And I was going back to that DB system. And I want to connect to that endpoint. I've run a couple of things on here already. I, I've installed the community clients. So I'll use the shell, connect to that, and I'll connect as my admin user. No? Yay. So if I uh, take a look at the actual user that I've got, you can see that I'm provisioned with a user, but I don't have all of the privileges. It's a managed service, so we hold some of those back from you. You don't get reload. You don't get shut down file super particularly. Um, and you don't get to create table spaces in, in random places. Um, you also get a set of restrictions that are taken from you, something that we added in AO actually for the cloud so that we could manage and make sure that the MySQL schema isn't broken from underneath the service as well. So you can't drop the MySQL user table, for example, those, those kinds of things. Um, if I do a show, full process list, You can see that it's coming from this, this network. So all of the networking works properly where even though we're in two different places, connecting into your network, it, we're, we're still exposing things so that you can um, use uh, host-based wildcards and all of those kinds of things to then create your own users. And all that. So now that you have the, the, the connection to the instance, off you go, you're ready. Um, that's MySQL database service. Uh, you know, that's a, a, a very quick look at uh, creating a database system, creating a, um, a, a configuration, reusing the configuration, looking at backups. You can restore a backup. It's the same as uh, launching one, essentially. It fills in all of the details for you in no time. So to quickly come back and wrap up, So the, as I said, the, we've been working on the, the database service for a, a long time. There's been a number of people that have been working on it. The, the, the database server itself has had a number of improvements over the, the past couple of years to, to actually work with the service, all done by the server team. My team have been there uh, creating all of the infrastructure for the control plane and the, the work to do at the, the workflows and looking after the database service and building out all of these APIs and, and interfaces. The backup team, the guys who do MEB, are also involved in the service and creating all of the snapshots. HA team are doing all of the things like inbound replication and HA. And the database tools team are doing clients, uh, you know, shell and import and all of those kinds of things. We're fully invested in the, in the service itself. It's fully managed by us as well. So we transformed, transformed ourselves into a DevOps team. Um, the entire engineering org understands how to operate the service. They uh, have all been trained as um, operations staff, all understand how to debug the, you know, problems in, in the entire stack. Uh, our QA team are building and, and testing the service continually. So every version of MySQL that you've been um, using over the recent months have all been tested and, and built for, with compatibility in mind for the, the MySQL database service as well. Nothing will be released without that being compatible. Um, and there are automatic upgrades across all of the minor versions. We, we manage everything for you. You don't have to worry about anything. You launch the service, we'll patch it, we'll keep it up to date. Um, and it exposes our engineering team to all of the problems that you have on-prem as well. It's, it's been a great virtuous circle for us. It's supported by the, the, the MySQL support team. Like Thomas, I've been with the, the org for a long time. I've been here 15 years now. 
Uh, I started my life in MySQL support. The team are amazing. They understand MySQL um, from code to user. They can debug any of your problems, help you with MySQL database service, help you deploy, help you debug, all, all of those kinds of things. They're available to you 24 by 7. Uh, and they're fully integrated into the engineering organization. They sit side by side us. So we've got constant communication and constant um, uh, work in, you know, hand in hand with both the engineering team and the support team, uh, particularly around the database service. And you get all of that at a cost saving that is either 3.1 to 3.7 times less expensive than um, all of the other major cloud providers. So in, in this example, we have 100 OCPUs, around about a terabyte of storage. Um, on ours, they're, they're on the standard E2 uh, AMD cores. But you can see the, the total cost of ownership over, uh, over a year for this is uh, amazing, right? So 3 to 3.7 times less expensive over the year. Uh, there's not a lot of reason why um, from a price performance perspective, you shouldn't be looking at, at the MySQL database service. So to wrap up, we're proud and, and pleased to announce to you the, the MySQL database service, our, our new fully managed database service available from the MySQL team natively integrated into OCI. Um, it's 100% developed, managed and supported by us we are all here in the MySQL engineering team to make sure that the MySQL database service is the, uh, again, hopefully the, the number one most successful MySQL service in, in the world. You know, that's our, our, our goal, essentially. Um, it it, it is, has been our passion for a number of years, and we're here to make sure that it succeeds. It's driven a lot of the innovation that you've seen in MySQL over the past couple of years. A number of the things that we've done have been done so that we can create a service that's easy to deploy and manage in, in those kinds of environments. And that helps you as well. Um, and it all comes to you at a con considerable saving uh, to, to everybody else. And it's ready to test drive now. Uh, you will get the, the chance to do that later today with some hands-on labs, check those out. Um, and it's coming to, it's either in a region near you or coming to a, a region near you very soon. So please give it a try and let us know what you think. Thank you.